What's up guys, my name is Jared Kaufman. I'm a carpenter here in Colorado, and this is my tool trailer. And uh, today I wanna show you some of the features on it and uh, yeah, how we built it out and how I like to use it. So the first thing that I want to talk about, and it's probably my favorite feature on this, is the hose slash plug connections. So each of these here is basically a custom made um, connection to basically let the trailer run independently even with the doors shut. So if I'm working in cold weather and I don't want this open or if I'm working in an area that I don't want to leave the trailer unlocked, I can basically shut and lock the trailer and it can still get power in and air out without having to run hoses through a connection there. So basically, this trailer connection here, it's NOCO is the brand, it's just an Amazon. It's, it's basically plug and play, drill a hole, plug it through. I caulked the edges to make sure it was waterproofed. And then all of the air fittings are a little bit more intricate than that, but basically these are exterior outlet covers. Um, so they're made to be weatherproof and protect your electrical connections um, when they're shut, obviously. So again, it's, I drilled a hole, routed from the inside uh, air line to the outside. Since I use the max high pressure system, I'm running both 120 PSI and 320 PSI. So that's why I have two separate outlets. I'll usually run a lead line from these with the air splitter off of that. And then once the hoses are unplugged, then the system can close all together and keeps it all water sealed. Same with the power. I'm gonna leave the power in though to show you guys the rest. Now on the inside here, you can see these air fittings here. And I'll put a link in the description to each of these things. The standard pressure was a lot easier to run because basically standard pressure lines, it's all running at 120 PSI. All the fittings are made for that. But the high pressure side is reverse threaded in order to basically keep people from doing this. They don't want people making their own connections that aren't rated for as high of a PSI. So all that being said, you know, warning disclosure, be smart if you're gonna do this. Make sure everything is solid and will be is good up to a 300 and probably at least 400 PSI just to be safe. So these are screwed onto the wall here and the fittings are running through that into the outside. And then I have air hose lines running up the wall of the trailer and through the ceiling up to the compressor. We'll check that out now. All right, so that's how the air comes out of the compressor or in out of the trailer. But first we need to talk about, or next we need to talk about how the electricity comes in. So the plug comes out right here, right behind this air hose, if you can see that, and then into a three-way here. Then it's running into this cable here, which runs up and over the shelves and into a four banger outlet right by the compressor. And then another cord runs down across the bottom of the threshold here over to a power strip, which runs all of these chargers. So now with the power coming from over here, that allows me to power quite a few things. The microwave, we like packing lunches. Ramen is a good cheap option, even just to keep as a snack in the trailer. It powers this cooler slash warmer here. It has both settings. I'll link that on Amazon as well. The microwave is just from Walmart. Um, and then it also lets me power these lights on the ceiling here. These are very low power LED lights, but they're super bright. It just helps a little bit if you're working late, showing up early to be able to see and make sure things get put away where they belong. So that's super nice. Oh, and then of course, it's powering the compressor itself. So for all the chargers that I have running, I've got some camera batteries here, nothing too crazy, but I obviously film a lot, so I like to keep those just charged up, drone batteries. Um, but then I run two Milwaukee chargers, the four banger Metabo charger, and a double battery Makita charger. This pass load radio also doubles as a charger inside. So I have got pass load batteries charging there as well. And that just makes sure that we're gonna have everything we need whenever we need it. And all that's running off of this power strip right here. 
All right, so now with the air and electricity taken care of, we can get into tool storage. So there's really on this side, four main areas for tools. And basically what I have is on the top, smaller hand tools, impacts, grinder, jigsaw, finish nailer. Below that, I've got nailers, um, framing nailers mostly, and then a couple Tico and siding guns. Below that is the saw shelf. And then below that is kind of a miscellaneous box. I keep the high pressure concrete nailer. I keep a saw, saw hammer drill, stuff like that. And then on the very bottom again is kind of miscellaneous storage. Miscellaneous storage is really, really important um, in construction because we do different stuff every single day and it just helps to have spots for odds and end type things that aren't necessarily getting used every single day. All right, so let's get into the full setup on this side. We'll start here on the bottom. This whole platform is drilled out for SDS plus screws. I've also got a couple holes specially drilled for larger drill bits and auger bits. Then here, I have it drilled out for long quarter inch bolts, like um, as you can see paddle bits or 3 8 extensions. And then this spot is just for bit boxes. I try to keep them labeled for various types. That doesn't necessarily always stay that way. So then above that, just a little, you know, utility blade thing just screwed to the wall. It's you know, not very sophisticated, not very special. We've got the zip roller spots, a little T cut into there. So these fit right in there. We could probably fit four or five if we really needed to, but we only have two. Obviously, two foot level. You could hang a three footer there if you wanted to. This is one of our favorites. Landon came up with this awesome idea. Our grinder spot runs with, oh, if I can get it, with three screws, just like that. So two below the guard and one above. And you can set it in there, and just lock it right in and it won't move at all. All right, so now on the inside. Obviously up top, we've got the drill spots, impact, regular drill, half inch impact, jigsaw, finish nailer. This is the uh, universal square or layout square as it's also called right here. Keep a 12 inch square there. The router I keep right here, just on a little angled notch that fits the handle. Just keeps it up and out of the way and leaves all of this shelf space open. So again, this then creates even more miscellaneous storage. Chargers, orbital sander, another finish nailer, socket set for the half inch impact, all that good stuff. Then back here again, We've got our nailers. So these shelves are all on a slight angle, as you might notice. It's basically a 212 angle, which so far has been enough to keep everything inside without rolling out. So you've got nail guns here, stick nailer, siding gun in there, a couple Tico nailers. And then down below that is the saw shelf. So we've obviously got room for multiple saws. If guys happen to have theirs, these are just my two personal saws, so they're here. And then here we've got the uh, Sawzaw, uh, hammer drill, the concrete nailer, a couple hammer tackers, and then below that, again, more miscellaneous. Glue gun, screw caddy. I've got the tire iron for the trailer in case I need it. All that good stuff. So now, this side. This side is basically, by and large, the miscellaneous spot. I try to keep boxes of nails on the bottom because they're heavier and they're going to be harder to lift, so if they're sliding on the ground, that's a heck of a lot easier. Vacuum here, a couple other nails, hand drives, ledger locks, and a bunch of miscellaneous crap up on top. And of course, our trusty tape tube. Obviously, we went over the chargers. I've got hooks here for all the different cords and hoses, enough to make sure we have extra if we need them. And then traveling back inside, this is another spot that I really like. Got a spot here for sledgehammer, pry bars, leaf blower, chainsaw, all on a vertical angled shelf. So that way we can fit it in there and out easily. That goes beneath the microwave. It's just a regular microwave. Bought this thing from Walmart, nothing crazy. And above that, another miscellaneous shelf that's usually where I'll keep cup of noodles and snacks and waters. All right, below that, a good spot for caulking. In the winter, I'll throw caulking tubes in this. I'll switch it to the warm setting and put them in there. Below that, more miscellaneous stuff. We've got retractable lifelines and stuff like that. 
and of course here's the power for the compressor. Compressor is a given. I should note, I try to drain this thing every single day, and whenever I do drain it, I just drain it right under the plywood floor. It's not that nice of a floor, and I'm not worried about keeping it that way. Worst case scenario, I'll switch it out. Now, above the cooler, another miscellaneous shelf. Right now, I have a small heater I can run in the winter if I need to. Usually, we never trip breakers. Actually, let me rephrase that. We never trip breakers except for when we plug in the heater, so I don't really use it. Now, these screws here will actually support the chop saw stand when I have it in here, as you'll notice slash see in the video of putting it together. So usually that will go in this corner here. Then I have more miscellaneous hooks back here, which are good for harnesses and ropes. Anytime we're doing roof work and we wanna make sure we're staying OSHA compliant. And then these two hooks here are lined up perfectly. They'll fit the cordless Milwaukee chop saw right on that. And what's nice with this side access door right here, the chop saw, ladders, everything is easy to get to without having to get it all through the trailer here. So now here, this section again, I apologize for being so close with the camera. We've got the ladder, bungee corded to the shelf to make sure it doesn't fall over. And behind that is the truss fasten master uh, frame fast screw gun, which is like three feet long. So that's why um, it's in a big box like that. And of course, the hooks for all the bags, where we can hang those at the end of the day. And something else I made, you can see the bolts here. That's actually a spare tire stand right here. I still got to spray paint it so it doesn't rust, but that's just, the spare tire used to be rolling around inside of there and removing that and putting it on the outside made it a lot easier. So I'll get a tire cover for that and then spray paint these to make sure they're not rusting. All right, so that's the tour. Up next is, um, I'll show you how we built it. Hopefully you enjoy it. me finish these up I guess we actually still need to put some screws in but the sheets are all cut and in place we'll just zip those screws in we've been having to pre-drill because the self tappers I got are kind of trash um, but uh, anyways then we'll start cutting stuff for the actual shelves the walls are just half inch CDX we got some nicer probably for the three-quarter stuff what is it it's AC grade three-quarter AC grade three-quarter cabinet, cabinet grade that's right. So, but anyways, the shelves themselves will be made out of three quarter. The walls are just half inch to cover them up and give us something to screw into along the perimeter of the shelves. And then I'll do brackets into the frame members of the trailer as well. So yeah. So I'm thinking compressor going like back over here. Okay. And then we can set up like the microwave. We can probably do that cooler thing and the microwave all here mm -hmm. with maybe some miscellaneous Just shelves. Just like here and here, you mean? And it will hook up some lines that will stick out probably like right over here. So we can like plug in mm -hmm. uh, normal and high pressure. And then I'll do like a outlet plug in there too.
fucking alley. Oh yeah, baby. Show the people what they want to see. Oh. She. What's that? What's that? Oh, it's just a hump. Sprinkle sawdust on that. Really? You done, buddy? On your impact driver is always on. Yeah, I do not know what's up with that. I know it's a setting. Yeah. This guy. A sixteenth bigger than three eighths, you know? Yeah, totally. Like a seven seven sixteenths or uh Yeah. There you go, sir. Have a great time. <laughs> And we're going to do the same thing on top of this. So we can set things up there, but it'll also be somewhat of a working platform. You got it. What's the opposite of Stalin Lopez? Millennial Carpenter. The opposite. Oh, my word. Oh, you're, well, that's yeah, there good. we go. Oh, we'll clean that up. Oh, well, I'm also not square again. It'll caulk. Oh, there. That'll definitely caulk. That will caulk. Beautiful. All right, so this is the trailer jack that came on the trailer. I'm not a huge fan of it because I can't totally open my tailgate with it, which means I can't open my drawers, which means it's worthless. So I picked up one of those pivoting ones. I'm going to put it on this side just because I don't want to cover the uh, whatever that thing is, serial number, all that good stuff. So we're going to mount the other one and then we'll take this guy off now. Okay, so kind of my thought now is the compressor will probably stay here and then eventually I want to actually run like I think I mentioned it to you already, where we'll do like air hoses that'll come up and then out the side. Okay. Maybe I'll just do it here because a lot of the powered stuff would be back here. Maybe well, I would say we, if we oh, do with it the door. here, right. so we could run over and do it here so the door doesn't swing open. Anymore. Yeah, or I can even come out. Well, I probably will still go on the back side of the trailer. Like, I'll just come up and around and through over here. I like your idea of doing our chainsaw slash blower a little bit lower, and then microwave shelf here. Cooler slash warmer goes here above the compressor within the lunch shelves, cup of noodles for days. Like hooks and stuff here, we can hang like harnesses maybe. And then you mentioned hanging a chop saw. Would that be here? So we got this piece in. This is basically where we're gonna store the leaf blower and chainsaw. Um, it's basically just suited to do that. I can also store some fold up sawhorses in there, um, which is convenient. But the next thing we need to do to build above it is I wanna make sure we have enough clearance 
for whatever goes on top of this. So basically, here's what I'm gonna do. I already know the leaf blower needs more clearance than the chainsaw, just because I already messed with it. But I basically just wanna see how much room I need to get it out. So it's about right here where that pencil line is. I'm gonna give myself like, I don't know, another two inches. Just make sure we're good. And that is how we can maximize the amount of space we have inside here while also making sure we're still utilizing that. So I'll measure that parallel, mark it on the other side. We'll put our microwave shelf here. Um, and then we'll probably have some room. I'll probably be able to store like a bulk box of like cup of noodles or something just if guys forget lunch or if anyone wants a snack, we got something cheap and non-perishable on the shelves. All right. So here's what we got done in here. Got the chop saw hanging here. Compressor there. Cooler there. Saw stand there. This spot here, as I showed, is where the chainsaw slash leaf blower goes. The cooler is fully mounted in and I gave us enough room to open that completely. Got this thing here, not totally sure what I'll put there. Um, microwave will go here. I don't have it right now, though. It's actually at a job. I'm going to eventually hang harnesses there. Rooms here. So really, this section here is a wrap. And the next areas will be finishing up little spots. That, here, and then we'll get to wiring all right, so it's still not done, but the fittings are in. They mount to the plywood here and come through out these electrical covers. It's pretty great. This is the high pressure one. This is the normal pressure one. And then of course the power there. So money, he doesn't even know it's money. Beautiful. It's gonna go, we're making a little rectangle. It's gonna be perfect around this zip things. We'll go a little bit wider probably. And then we'll be able to fit it in and then slide it down and be able to fit three. in more like that just like put it like this and then like, yeah, you know, I like that. <coughs> dude that's freaking awesome <laughs> you're good in between though mark Up with that. 
way, and if you need it, you can still get it. Yeah, I like that way. In the van. In the trailer? Yeah. I like had a couple ideas that I told you. I didn't actually. That's when we were mostly at different jobs. Yep, exactly. When I first got it. Thank you.